What's up, everybody? Welcome to some Fanax Crank. I hope you're excited for some black blue uh, artifacts. Oh, yes, indeed. But as far as our opening hand goes, yeah, we not uh, we got a lot of artifacts, but not a lot of lands. So we need some lands to go with those. Uh, we've got one Teleria West. Yeah, let's go one more Mulligan. Sunken Hollow, Drowned Catacombs, Toxic. Yeah, we can make this work. We'll go and keep on this one. And then Spire of Industry on top. Yeah, we'll go and put that on top. It looks like our opponent is on the place, so we will let them do their thing. Uh, we are playing Fanax, God of Deception. Indestructible Devotion 7 turns into a creature. Then, uh, basically, creatures have tap. Target player puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard, where X is that creature's toughness. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the... Uh, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to get the Sunken Hollow down. Yeah, get that down. That way, Drowned Catacomb comes into play untapped, and then we can go for uh, any of the stuff in our hand. We're playing its Cami of the Crescent Moon. At the beginning of each draw step, that player draws an additional card. Double blue. Pretty fun. Might just be, uh, I don't know, what we're in store for. Mono blue, good stuff. We'll see what's going on. If Kami comes down, I will definitely welcome that. Uh, because we do have ways to kind of deal with uh, Kami. We do have Toxic Deluge to keep him off the battlefield. And then hopefully we'll kind of maybe draw into a few counter spells. Make sure that it's not like an extra turn stack or something like that. But then I'll also explain what we've got going on with uh, Fanax too. Which is really excited and really fun deck I've been uh, playing over here. Okay, draw an additional card, Halimar Depths, and a bunch of lands. We don't really necessarily need to go for either of these creatures right now. Let's go ahead and go for... Yeah, let's go for Halimar Depths. That way, maybe we can kind of stack the top part of our library if we want to shuffle something away. I got the Spyglass, Read the Bones, and Inventor's Fair. Um, let's go ahead and go, let's go Spyglass... Adventures Fair, and then Read the Bones. Okay, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. But yes, so this is Finax, 100% playing Finax, but we're not really focusing on a Mill Them Out style. I mean, we are. We are focusing on a Mill Them Out style way, but mainly we're focusing on the Minecraft combo. So we have different ways to kind of get into the combo. Uh, we're running Videlican Aether Mage in here, which has Wizard Cycling for 3, which Dust Metal Guild Mage is a uh, wizard, so we can use it for 3 mana to kind of search up Dust Metal Guild Mage. And we're also running a lot of Transmute style cards. So we have Demir Infiltrator for 3 mana, we can discard this card and search your library for a card with converted mana cost 2, uh, which is actually going to be Minecrank and Dust Metal Guild Mage. So we're in a pretty good spot for that. All right, drawn to that Read the Bones, and then hit that Inventor's Fair. Let's go and get the uh, Drowned Catacomb down. Let's go for Read the Bones. Okay, let's go and put the Sorcerer's Spyglass on the bottom. And I think the same thing with the Trinket Mage. Yeah, I'm not really feeling the Trinket Mage. Ooh, beautiful. Drawn to Tezzer. I was just thinking we need to get some good Tezzer going. All right, anything else? We're going to go ahead and pass the turn. Now, we do have eight cards in hand. We'll have to put one card into the uh, the graveyard. But I think at this point, we're going to go and hold on to... Um, this is actually both the combo pieces right here if we want to tutor them up. So we're going to hold on to both of them. Um, and I like holding on to Dark Steel Citadel so we can get an artifact down for Tezzeret. Um, let's just go ahead and get this point right now. Just go ahead and get rid of... Um, We'll get rid of Ghost Quarter. Uh, we can use Ghost Quarter as a way to get the combo rolling with Minecrank and um, Dust Metal Guild Mage, but I think at this point we're okay with this spread right here. But yeah, so outside of the Minecrank combo, we do have stuff like Tezzeret, which is kind of a backup plan. Uh, we're running, I think, four copies of Tezzeret in here, and when, when they made that change to the Legendary Planeswalker rule, definitely made this deck a lot better. So I was really excited about that, and our opponent's got their very own Tezzeret, so that's pretty cool. Let's see what they're going to go for. They do have the, uh, the plus ability, the minus ability. But yeah, there's just some games where, you know, maybe we can't find one of our tutor pieces for Minecrank or actually find Dust Metal himself, and when you get uh, Tezzeret going, Feels really good to get those activations going. Opponent's going to go for zero with their own Tezzeret. But, uh, but yeah, going to beat sticks with Tezzeret. It's just, ooh, it's always good. Enters the battlefield. You may discard a land card instead. Okay, they did chunk an island off that. And let's see if the uh, Kami's going to swing in or not. Swing it for one. Okay, it's going to put us down to 27. I mean, excuse me, put us down to 26. Two total commander damage. And then let's see what you draw into. Everflowing Chalice and Time Twister. I think... All right, so with the blue Tezzeret over there, we don't really have to worry about the minus five ability, so we can simply just get down Tezzeret and be in a good spot. Let's go and get down the Dark Steel Citadel. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's go Dark Steel. Let's get down Tezzeret. We're going to look at blue, black. And the next turn, we can kind of start working on Everflowing Chalice, getting that down, kind of really upping our artifact count. We still have Toxic Deluge to kind of clear the board out, too. If we're worried about our opponent kind of swinging in a bunch. Um, let's go ahead and go plus uh, plus up on Tezzeret. Plus it up to four. Look at the top five cards of our library. And then let's go ahead and grab... Ooh, Dust Metal Guild Mage. Okay. And in fact, let's go ahead and grab Aether Vial on this one. Yeah, I do like that. Let's grab Aether Vial. 
put these on the bottom in any order. All right, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. We could technically just cast Everflowing Chalice for zero. Just kind of keep our Tezzeret count up instead of discarding something. Um, I can't really see us. We've got a lot of stuff. Yeah, let's just go and cast it. We're just going to cast it for zero at this point. That way, you know, we do have more artifacts for Tezzeret. And then we can also get to Inventors Fair online, hopefully kind of quick. Uh, the main reason I did that is because we're looking at three mana either way the next two turns if we're going to need to find Dust Metal Guild Mage or Mine Crank uh, through the Demir Infiltrator or through a Videlican Aether Mage. And with us hitting Aether Vine with this uh, Tezzer, it kind of makes it a little bit easier for us to go for the combo in that way. So, uh, what you do is you get Minecraft down on the battlefield, uh, you get Aether Vial ticked up to two, uh, Vial and Aether Vial, I mean, excuse me, uh, activate Aether Vial and Vial in Dust Metal Guild Mage and activate his ability to any sort of card hitting the graveyard. And if you've never seen the Dust Crank, uh, the Mind Crank Dust Metal combo, uh, what ends up happening is uh, Dust Metal says, hey, whenever you lose a life, put a card in the graveyard. And then Mind Crank says, hey, whenever a card goes in the graveyard, you lose a life. Long story short, they're just going to keep cycling until your opponent runs out of cards or runs out of life, whatever comes first. So even if they have a shuffle effect like um, one of the Eldrazi creatures, that card's still going to hit the bin, and then that trigger goes on the stack. So you're still going to get that, uh, that Mind Crank shuffle going. So pretty much you can win out. The only way you can't get the combo going is through something like Rest in Peace. That is going to completely stop your combo. Um, I learned the hard way on that. <laughs> Not a lot of fun. <laughs> I was playing it in Modern, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go for the win, and then I'm going to go down Rest in Peace. I was like, oh, yeah, the card never technically hits the bin, so it doesn't count that way. Okay, our opponent gets down Anvil of uh, Bow Garden. No max hand size at the beginning of each player's draw stuff. That player draws an additional card and then discards a card. Okay, sure, go for it. Um, the main thing we're watching, I guess we're watching out for with Cami is, um, yeah, I'm not really sure what, I think I've played against this deck before, and what they do is they, they go for a bunch of extra turns. So as long as we're not getting a bunch of extra turns right now, I think we're going to be okay. We'll see what's going on, though. Okay, so we're going to kick it back over to us. So we're going to get the Kami trigger, get the Anvil trigger too. Counterspell, that's a pretty good draw. I'll hold on to that. Draw an additional card off the Anvil. I love the art on this one. looks so good. Um, let's go and discard Sad Robot. We're not really in a spot for that at this point right now. Draw an additional card off Kami. Uh, let's go to get the Marsh Flats down. So right now... Yeah, I don't want to run into a Counterspell. Let's go ahead and we can cycle. Let's go and get the Aether Vial down off the Dark Steel Citadel. Do we want to actually animate the Everflowing Chalice for minus one to swing in at their own Tezzer? Just kind of make sure we kind of keep stuff in check. We don't really need artifacts that bad. Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's go, let's go minus one on the Everflowing Chalice. And this what makes Tezzer so fun is you get to swing in with the 5-5 five, five Everflowing Chalice. We're going to swing in at Tezzer. And then we'll have the um, Demir Infiltrator to transmute. Let's go and swing in at Tezzer for five. See if we'll get the Kami block on that. And then we still have Counterspell back up. So we'll see if we actually want to leave up Counterspell and then maybe Wizard Cycle and Transmute next turn. We'll see how we actually we want to kind of do it. All right, give it a Kami. And then anything else? No, we're going to go and pass the turn. Yeah, I like holding up Counterspell. You know, just in case there's, um, you know, it's kind of like that Mono Blue turns deck in Modern. Sometimes you just draw a bunch of cards and take a bunch of extra turns and then you win the game out with something like Awaken or something. So we'll see what they've got going on right now. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They're tapping out for Torrential Gear Hulk. And right now, enters the battlefield. You may cast target instant from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Feels like kind of like a desperate play. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and go Counterspell. I don't, I don't mind doing that. That's a 5 6. Well, we have Toxic on the back end. If they want to swing in at Tezzeret, Tezzeret's really not our main priority. Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. Yeah, it's a 5-6 body. Yeah, that's okay. Go for it. I, I was thinking about countering it, but, you know, if that's the best play that they can come up with is just flashing in Torrential Gear Hulk at this point right now with nothing in the graveyard. Yeah, that's not too uh, not too bad. We, we can survive that. You know, if they want to take out Tezzeret, go for it. But, yeah, so since we did pass the turn and hold up a counter spell, we are going to go for Vide uh, Videlican Aether Mage with the Wizard Cycling, so we can grab that. And the fun thing about uh, Videlican Aether Mage is it's a pretty good commander card. You know, you can run it in any sort of blue deck that really cares about wizards. And there's a lot of creatures that are blank wizards, like human wizards, whatever wizard. So if you ever need to search up a certain utility creature, you can go for that with the Videlican Aether Mage. And it makes for um, one of the best things to do is that, like, a modern tournament, <laughs> uh, just lay down Videlican Aether mage and tell them you're wizard cycling and then you'll just get the look like what <laughs> yeah i've had a lot of people just over there i played a lot of mind crank in modern and when you go for a wizard cycling with fidelic and aether mage it's always just like huh 
Are you sure? Or they have that look on their face like, that doesn't smell good. Like Kind of like they stepped in dog dog stuff. <laughs> it's like, this is not going to end well for me. All right, Pun's going to get down Shrine. Uh, Devotion's at four right now, so not too bad. They can, it could be worse, but it's not bad. Basically, they're going to get one mana ahead with the Shrine out there. So we'll see if they're going to tap out for on this one. Okay, Kami's coming back down. Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go for that Wizard Cycling. So let's go and crack the Marsh Flats once I kind of pass it back over. And we're at 26, so we're not really worried about them swinging in. Untap two artifacts. Sure, go for it. Get the Cold Steel Heart. And the, also, the other good thing about Vidalcan Aether Mage is that it is an activated ability, so it cannot be countered. Had a lot of people start tapping mana and have to do the hands up real quick. Like, oh, no, hold up. This is an activated ability, not a... <laughs> not a spell, this is just activated ability. Alright, let's go ahead and grab the Fetid Pools. I think that sounds good. Coming to play tapped. Let's go for the Wizard Cycling for three. We're going to get that uh, that Aether Vial taking up next turn too, so we can actually just go for Transmute, and then we can actually Toxic if we want to. Let's grab that Dust Mantle. But yeah, you can see we could grab Trinket Mage if we needed to. We know we're not in a dire need for Trinket Mage at this point right now. So, alright. And then we've got the uh, Aether Vial triggered. Yes, we're going to tick that up to one. Drawn to Thought Vessel. We'll have the Kami trigger and the Anvil trigger too. Uh, Polluted Delta, discard a card. I guess we'll go ahead and get rid of... We have the land drop to make for... Yeah, we'll go and get rid of uh, Thought Vessel. I'm okay with that. And then draw another card off Kami. It's going to be another Swamp. Um, we do have Artifacts. Let's go and get Spire down. And let's go ahead and Transmute. That's going to be 1, 2, 3. Actually, we need to uh, do that a little bit differently. There we go. Let's go blue and then black. I'm going to tap out for one. And we're going to search for... And once again, the Demir Infiltrator cannot be responded to. Uh, let's go and grab Mind Crank. Now, at this point right now, we could try and put it down. We do not have Counterspell Backup, which is not something I really want to do. And then even next turn, um, you know, we're going to have enough mana to kind of go for Counterspell. And I think that's going to be one, two... Get down that, Counterspell Backup, and the lane. Yeah. So we're just going to wait until next turn. Uh, we're not really under any super pressure. Um, artifacts you control become artifact creatures of base power 5-5 five, five until end of turn. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. That'll be 20. Yeah, and we still have Everflowing Chalice to kind of chunk block right now. So um, even if our opponent does go for a Tezzeret Ultimate, uh, I'm okay with just holding off right now. I'd hate to just run it into an actual counter spell or something like that. Okay, anything else? No, we're going to go past the turn. Yeah, and we could go for Toxic, but at the same time, um, I like holding on to Everflowing Chalice because when you're trying to go for the combo, you know, as long as you have a creature out on the battlefield, uh, what you can do is you can swing in with the creature, and let's say that they're going to block with Kami, so we can activate Dust Metal Guild Mage's ability uh, before we go to combat damage once we swing in with our creature, so that way... If our creature kills that or destroys that creature, um, that's going to go to the bin and that's going to trigger the mind crank combo to get going. But unfortunately, you know, sometimes like we haven't got Fanax down. You know, that is unfortunate. But really, the way I've kind of built this deck, it's really a bit mo more of a mind crank, like 60 mind crank and then like 40 UB Tezzeret or however you want to break it down. It's basically almost half and half. So, um, pretty fun. All right. Punt's going to go for six off the uh, Tezzeret the Seeker. Let's see what that's going to be. See if we survive this one. <laughs> Though he's Tezzeret for six, you're like, oh, okay, let's see what we got going on. And I guess if they wanted to go for anything, six mana. I'm trying to think. That could be like Worm Coil Engine. And like Spine is. Okay, Cage Sun. Okay, there we go. So that'll really open their mana up. Now, here's the main thing is we still have Counter Spell. So if they're going to tap out for any sort of extra turn spell right now, uh, we can go for that and buy us just a little bit of time, hopefully. I mean, go for that. But uh, we'll see. Okay, looks like they're tapping out. That's going to be six total mana they're tapping out for. The Gear Hulk is a 6-7 over there. Pretty sweet. All right. Well, maybe Temple of the False God. Maybe they're going to swing in first for eight. Okay, there we go. Now they're getting the taps going. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Teferi. Untap it to four permanent. Yeah, I think we got to go counter on this one. You know, they get down to Teferi... Untap up to four permanents. Look at the top two cards of your library. Do we have to go counterspell on this? They're going to be able to filter, untap up to four permanents. Really, the permanents we're looking at are going to be like Temple of the False God, Cold Steel Heart, and Mo Yeah, I don't think this is where we fight. That's not the hill we die on. I'm okay with that. Then they go through. We just need to. We're just really dead to like an extra turn card or something like that. 
because as long as we can get it back to our turn, get down Mind Crank successfully, um, we'll have that Aether Vial ticked up to two, and we can just basically vial in our creature in response to anything. All right, opponent's going to get seven mana added to their mana pool, and I don't think they haven't gone for a um, Thought Reflection. If you draw a card, draw two cards instead. Okay, should go for that. And then one thing we do have to watch out for is any sort of bounce spell on Mind Crank. That's going to completely... Um, stop the combo. Now, Decimal Guild Mage, it can be on the battlefield. If it gets destroyed, if it gets path to exiled, doesn't really matter. Um, that's going to happen. As long as we get that activation going, then we're good. But Mind Crank, we have to keep it on the battlefield. So that's another thing we have to watch out for, is because blue tends to have a lot of um, a lot of spells that allow you to kind of bounce stuff back to the hand. Okay, see what they're tapping out for. They've only got four cards in hand, so if this is a big something spell, I'm, I feel pretty good about... Yeah, let's go ahead and go counter spell on this one. I'm going to go blue and then blue. See if this is good. There's only three cards in the hand. Maybe they've got a counterspell backup. If not, then I'm okay with this one. So that's three mana. That's going to be three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to be eight total mana right there. Oh, bummer. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got to get some stuff moving. Let's see if... Um, Oh, that's that's a bummer. All right, so we've got Spell Swindle, Hostage Taker. What we can do is we can start grabbing some stuff. Damnation, if we need to go for that. Baleful Strix. Um, we did, unfortunately, miss out on the Time Twister, which is a little bit of a bummer. So we'll see exactly what we need to go for. Okay, that's going to be one, two, three, four. Jason Mind Sculptor. Okay, go for that. Now, we do have a couple different ways. I think we've got... Um, do you have the Junk Troller, I think, which is the... 06 artifact creature that allows us to put cards on the bottom of our library. So that is a way for us to kind of get some of these cards back on if we need to go for the mind crank combo. Um, we did lose Tezzeret. We do have a, like three more Tezzerets in here, so it's not the end of the world. And we do have the Spyglass, so if we need to kind of name the Spyglass on something either Teferi or Jace to kind of lock them out, we can go for that with the Spyglass. See what else is going on. And then we do have Go for the Throat. But unfortunately with the Torrential Gear Hulk, we cannot target Go for the Throat with the Gear Hulk because it is an artifact creature. But, oh, I could taste the combo. Dust Metal Guild Mage and Minecraft. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that happens sometimes. That is uh, that's 100% magic. But, yeah, basically what would have happened is if our opponent didn't have Windfall, but they did. So I'm not being, like, salty or anything like that. Um, we would have ticked up Aether Vial to two. Um, if they didn't have a counter spell, we would have been able to get down Mind Crank, and that would have left us with three mana available to basically just activate the combo in response to anything. And do they have a way to... Yes, they have a way to keep the cards in the hand. All right. So we're going to go and tick up Aether Vial to two. And we can actually vial in Baleful Strix if we want to get an extra card draw, too. Okay, tick it up to two. We draw our into our own Tezzeret. Um, let's get Cami down. Let's get Anvil. And then Underground River. Let's go ahead and discard one card. Three mana, draw two cards. Yeah, we'll go and get rid of Tezzeret's Gambit. I think we've got other stuff that we need to do. Draw into Fabricate. Okay, so at this point right now, what we can do is we can completely tap out and kind of lock Teferi and Jace out. Opponent's got 17 cards in the hand, though. So that's going to be... A little hard for us to kind of deal with. Um, let's go and get the Underground River down. Let's get the Sorcerer's Spyglass. Yeah, let's just get kind of take a peek at what's going on. I, I like this. Let's get the Spyglass down. Tap the Underground River. Get the Spyglass down. And that way it kind of opens. You know, we have Tezzer if we want to go for that. We have Fabricate to where we can grab Pithing Needle to grab one of the other creatures. And we'll just kind of see what, um, you know, if it's just a mountain of extra turn cards and, you know, it is what it is. We'll kind of throw it over to our opponent, but at least we can kind of see what's going on. And we still have Spell Swindle to kind of stop. If we need to go for Spell Swindle on a little spell like that, we can. Okay. So, we got Clever Impersonator, Counterspell, Font, Howling Mine, Weir of Invention, Pedium, Monastery Siege, and Jace right there. Okay. That's really not that... Um, that's doable. We can make that work. So mainly at this point right now, we need to name Teferi, and then we can also name Jace. Okay. A little worried about um, that that we're over there, but we'll see what they search up for. And in fact, let's go and name Teferi on this one. It's going to be Teferi Temporal Archmage. There we go. Name Teferi, and let's see if this uh, Fabricate's going to draw out a uh, counter spell from our opponent. Let's go one, blue, and then one. Search your library for an artifact card. We can grab that Pithing Needle and then see if that kind of draws that out. We'll also kind of make this pop out just a little bit more so we can grab that. Let's go Pithing Needle. 
Excuse me, I'm actually, I'm sorry, I forgot that I, I had Pithy Needle in here for a long time, uh, but I cut it for the Sorcerer's Spyglass to kind of fit on theme with our Transmute stuff. So what do we actually want to grab on this one? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, let's go and go Junk Troller. If we're going to start working back towards the combo, and your opponent's got a ton of cards in the hand, yeah, I guess we'll just go and go Junk Troller. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We'll grab Junk Troller, anything else. We have two mana. Um, we're just going to go ahead and pass the turn. Now, we can violin the Baleful Strix on our opponent's turn, so we can kind of catch the Torrential Gear Hulk off, um, off guard. There's that Flying and Death Touch. So that way, if they want to swing in with the 6-7, uh, they can. We can go and block the Baleful Strix and then uh, kind of take care of it from there. Okay, so your opponent's tapping out. This could be 1, 2, 3, 4. And in fact, if they want to go for a Weir of Invention right now, they can. But yeah, sorry about that... Uh, that not technically misplay, but I was in, intending to go for Pithing Needle on Jay so that we can kind of stop it. But um, but yeah, like I said, I forgot that uh, I cut Sorcerer's Spy. I cut Pithing Needle for Sorcerer's Spy Glass to um, fit on theme with the transmutability that we had. All right, we're for four. I'm just going to cross that off the uh, the checklist over there. Get the four down. See what uh, our opponent's going to have to show for it. I'm not really sure what that four they could really bring down with high impact. Frexian Metamorph, okay. And we'll see if they're going to go for their very own... No, they're going to go for Double Cage Sun. Why not? Let's have some fun. All right. <laughs> Get that going. And kick it back over to us. So, yes, yeah, so if they do swing with the Torrential Gear Hulk, we'll definitely slam this Baleful Strix and kind of go from that. Um, what our opponent could have done is if they wanted to get a little bit you know, creative, kind of gain a little bit more information. As instead of Cage Sun, um, they could have gone for the Social Spyglass on Frexian Metamorph. That way they kind of could have gotten a pretty good look at our hand just to kind of see what uh, they've got going on. And I think they did uh, played a snow covered. They discarded a snow covered island, and I don't think that was in the mix right there. No, it was not. So we'll see if they make a land drop for the turn. We'll get some of these cards crossed off, and then as they cast them, we'll go from there. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's the downside to going all in combo. You know, there's sometimes we have really quick games to where we. Um, we combo off really quick, but then there's also other games where we're kind of slowly working towards that combo, and then we get a uh, we get a windfall thrown our way, and we lose the entire combo. That's kind of what happens when you go all in like that. All right, Jace, yeah, sure, go for that. That's fine. And that's going to be no. They still have Jace the Living Guild Pack, and they still have Clever Impersonator too, and Counterspell Backup. So yeah, this is pretty much a pretty big uphill battle that we're looking to fight. They've got Howling Mine, Crucible of the Worlds too. Um, luckily with Crucible, there's not a lot of, um, you know, they don't have any Ghost Quarter or Wasteland or anything like that to kind of start blowing our lands up. So we don't have to worry about that. We'll see what they're going to get down. Okay, we're going to get Consecrated Sphinx coming down. And if opponent would draw a card, we do have Go for the Throat, so we can go for that. And then if they swing in with the Torrential Gear Hulk, we'll be a pretty good spot with that Baleful Strix. All right, each player draws a card. Um, let's go ahead and go for Go for the Throat in response to that. See if we can't draw out that counter spell. At least we force them to use it on something maybe they're not really that excited about. That's kind of my main thinking uh, with the counter spell out there. Because basically with Jace, when each player draws a card and they have Consecrated Sphinx on the battlefield, uh, they're going to be able to draw two cards. So, And then that kind of, kind of puts them in a weird spot. Okay, counter spell. Yeah, go for it. Love it. Give it a counter spell. Now, we'd still have Hostage Taker if we didn't go for anything like... Um, could technically hostage take her on torrential gear hulk and what do we want to cast out of our graveyard that bad not really uh, excel another creature or artifact until end of turn uh, we could you know they get the anvil out there cage sun really nothing out there super enticing we could go for hostage taker on consecrated sphinx that would be a good way we could take up either vial uh we take it up next turn to three take it up to four Violet it in and then kind of go from there. That might allow us to kind of get out from underneath this. All right, opponent still has five mana down. They got Al Moret's Archive down, Cage Sun, and I don't think they've made the Laboratory Maniac. Okay, so they are online for the Laboratory Maniac. So we actually, okay, we're not dead. We're not completely dead yet. There's like a, this weird way to where if they kind of get in the spots where we're going to draw a bunch of cards, we can Violin Hostage Taker and take Laboratory Maniac. Yeah, I think, let's try for that. That that might work. We'll give it a shot. If we do win, that'd be a pretty fun way to win. <laughs> I'll take it in a heartbeat. All right, they're going to get the Jace action going. And then kind of, but yeah, yeah, they still have Clever Impersonator to kind of make sure they have backup Laboratory Maniac. But um, I don't know. It's fun to kind of go for that. And we still have Damnation, too, if we want to kind of clear the board out. 
and make sure they kind of, and that could draw out another counter spell depending on what they draw into. Because we did see up to like 20, we saw like 16 or 18 cards. They're all the way at 32 cards with that Consecrated Sphinx. So uh, if I'm a betting man and I'm not a betting man, I would bet that they have another counter spell in there. So hopefully we can just kind of get this Aether Vial ticked up as quickly as possible. So with 36 cards in the library, we're looking at two from the Anvil, two from the Draw Step, two from Kami. So that's going to be six a turn. Yeah, we can, we can make it work. We'll give it a shot. It's not over yet. And we'll see if the we got the Trenchal Gear Hulk swinging in. They do have at least 10 points of damage coming across. If they do swing in with the Gear Hulk, um, we have that Bayful Strix to get down before we get a blockers. And we'll get a card draw off that, which, um, yeah, we're going to have to draw a card, which is really going to turn on Consecrated Sphinx, which is a little bit of a bummer. Give them a few extra cards. But the main thing is we get to take care of uh, the Trenchal Gear Hulk. <laughs> I love Bayful Strix jumping out of the forest. Ha <laughs> ha, Torrential Gear Hulk. Stepped right into my bird trap. Okay. Consecrated Sphinx are going to draw two cards. We draw into Spell Sky, which is actually not that bad. We can redirect some of that stuff over there. Okay. I get the Consecrated Sphinx trigger going. Let's go and jump block on the Gear Hulk. Once again, if they have a bounce spell, we can simply just get it down. But I think I like going for Hostage Taker on the uh, Laboratory Maniac. All right. Let's go and jump block on the Gear Hulk. There we go. A little bit of bird poop on that gear hulk that'll make it look a little bit shinier and then hopefully maybe our opponent's done all right they're gonna kick it back over to us now just to see if they have another counter spell we can go for damnation on the laboratory maniac and next i'm just going to take up aether vault up three and we draw into tectonic edge so there's going to be the consecrated sphinx trigger drawing a bunch of cards if we can just get over there we just make it work okay Get the Kami trigger, the Anvil trigger. It's actually our opponent's triggers to put on the stack, so we'll wait for them to get that going. Okay, get a card draw off Kami. Uh, draw into River of Tears. They're going to draw two cards. Get the Anvil trigger. Crow mocks River of Tears. Let's go and discard. I guess at this point we're at 25. We'll just go and discard the uh, Catacombs. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Discard the Catacombs. They're going to draw two cards, and then we still have our uh, draw step to go for. Now, as far as going for Damnation and Spell Swindle, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We'll actually have just enough mana for that. So, um, we may end up going for that. Okay, get the Consecrated Sphinx trigger. Going to be able to draw two cards. Actually, excuse me, but the... If you draw a card, draw two cards instead. So, that's going to put them at 8. Okay, it puts them at 4 cards. So, we need to push through the Damnation win right now. Okay, let's go ahead and get the River of Tears down. Let's get the Chromox going. Yeah, we get the Chromox exiling Tezzeret. We're going to go and exile yeah, Tezzeret from the hand. And then let's go ahead and go for Damnation. Just make sure we're looking at it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That'll be Damnation and Spell Swindle. Yeah, let's go for it. Alright, so we're looking at uh, blue. It's going to be black black and then colorless off the dark steel that's gonna be one two three four four yeah there we go make sure we have double blue okay let's go for damnation and show our creatures that can't be regenerated um at this point right now they are pretty far tapped out they've only got two that's gonna be one two three four so if they do have at least one counter spell um at least we can go for spell swindle to kind of stop it they may have another counter spell that we have to work around but um hey at least we're gonna go ahead and force the issue right now with them only having four cards in the library we're gonna try our best and worst case scenario, if they do completely tap out, we can go for hostage taker. Vincer's going to enter the battlefield. It's going to be 1 2. Now, if we let Vincer resolve, that puts him on like a one counter spell. Okay. Because if we get left this. Okay, we counter Vincer, and that's going to leave them 1 2. They have enough mana for one more counter spell with the island. Yeah, let's go and go for Spell Swindle on Vincer. I mean, they've got a ton of cards in the hand, but at least we're just going to go ahead and force it on this one. Yeah, let's go Spell Swindle. It's going to be blue. And then tap out for blue. Spell Swindle on Vincer. See if this sticks. That way the Damnation will go through, take care of that Laboratory Maniac. And, you know, they might have a counter spell. Who knows? We'll see. So we're just going to get this popped out down a little bit more. All right, one, two, three. And now that I'm thinking about it, 
now that we have spell scout in the hand, I don't know if I missed it, but what we could have done is, I mean, now that we know perfect information, we know if Vincent's on the battlefield, if we had left Aether Vial ticked up to two, um, not ticked it up, we could have uh, vialed in uh, spell scout, redirected these Vincer trigger over to spell scout, and then we could have bounced that back to the hand and counter whatever counter spell they tapped out for. Spell crumble on spell spin. Okay, hey, that's, you got it. Okay, Vincent's going to bounce the damnation back to the hand, and that's going to be enough right there. Yeah, when I mean, you've got a ton of mana, you've got double, uh, double cage suns out there. Sometimes it's kind of hard to fight through that. And that's going to be, uh, there we go. Counter the damnation, return it back to the hand, and then we're going to go and pass it back over to our opponent. So, we'll see. You know, maybe we can tick up the Aether Vial that will be doing our upkeep, and we'll be the active player. But with our opponent, active player, non-active, yeah, their triggers are going to go on the stack first, so... Each player draws a card, they're going to draw two, and that will be enough for them to close out with the Laboratory Maniac win. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Maybe we could have gotten a spot where we could have got down Spell Sky to kind of go for that Vincer thing. But once again, you know, we're just kind of playing around Counter Spell, not even thinking about Vincer. So, but good game by our opponent. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.